picking my nose at that time. <laughs> hey guys, Don Purdom, and you caught us having a fun discussion right there. I love that. Keep it real. <laughs> hey Veronica, I'm so excited to be doing this with you every week at this time. How are you today? Oh my goodness. Don, I'm excellent. I'm excellent. How are you? I am um I'm I'm fabulously exhausted. Hmm. How's that? I don't think I've ever used that language before. Fabulously exhausted. Fabulously exhausted. Why are you exhausted? Uh, I've been up since about 5.30 this morning after going to bed at about uh, 11.30 last night and just working, 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 working. Wow, that's, that's, um, you've been busy. I am, and I love it. I love every minute of it, and, and I love doing it with my wife, and we have a lot of fun together, and uh, it's just a neat time. It's a neat, neat time. That's awesome. But, so we want to start our show off, and uh, and we want to talk on our show about communication. And so some of those topics can be broad, and some of them can be very specific. You can never exhaust the topic of communication because all of us do it, and very few of us are really good at it. Would you agree with that, Veronica? Yes, I even have moments where I'm I'm uh, communication c communicationally challenged. <laughs> Uh, so take a moment. This is our first show, and um, tell let's tell our joint audiences uh, and people who will come on this video in the future a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, uh, my name is Veronica Schultz. I, aka the Soul Whisperer, and I am a holistic life coach. I help people overcome challenges in their life. Uh, um, it can be pretty general, or it can be pretty specific. Uh, I'm also an herbalist, so I touch base on uh, the physical health as well and and help guide the individuals uh, to uh, healing with herbs and and uh, um, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Way cool. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Don Purdom. I own uh, DonPurdom.com. I'm a speaker, a trainer, a coach in the area of helping small business owners and entrepreneurs and their families. And, and what I do is help bring those two worlds into alignment, the business and the family. So with that said, uh, I'm really excited again about doing this with you today and we want to talk about communication. And we've been kind of having, by the way, speaking of communication, for all you naysayers out there who claim that social media doesn't work, um, I would not be sitting here on this hangout right now with Veronica if that were true. Isn't that right, Veronica? Yeah, that would be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were on a on another person's uh, Facebook page, dialoguing in a conversation, and and we connected, and we haven't really looked back since, have we? No, no, it's amazing. Um, social social uh, media and social networking is absolutely amazing. Matter of fact, I just posted something today on my Facebook wall. Uh, don't forget Facebook etiquette. Mm. I, so many people forget about that. You know, um, I, I kind of liken uh, Facebook to my house. When people come to my wall, they're coming to my house. And I want them to be on their best behavior. Yeah. Absolutely. So, speaking of best behavior, when we start talking about communication, there are there are three levels of communication that I have identified over the years and and they reside in all of us and I think this is just a great place to start our journey together as we we explore this topic um, everybody has a parent everybody has an adult and everybody has a child in them now depending on your stage in life experiences maturity etc you may be at different levels pardon me different levels of each one of those and so Right now, Veronica and I are experiencing adult-to-adult -adult conversation. What do you? I mean, how do you? What do you think about that, Veronica? How does? How do those three levels of communication in your mind play out? Did you just mention all three of them? I, I don't think you did. Parent, adult, child. Parent. Oh, okay. Uh, well. Parent to parent, um, when, when as an adult, when you're talking parent to parent, that's uh, ultimately the best communication 
Um, um, and, and skills skills need to be developed. You know, you just don't roll out of bed and fall into great communication skills. And um, you said the next one was. Well, parent, adult, child, and you're right. I mean, I think that's a great preference is that a lot of us, you know, communication skills are something that are developed. They're not just something that we inherently have. Now, I think that's true when you're talking emotional-based communication, that parent to adult, where one sets themselves up as, the, as a leader or a parent figure that talks down to another person. And, and these people may be, you, maybe you're married, maybe you're, uh, maybe you're co-workers, maybe you're actually talking about a parent to a child or a neighbor to a neighbor. But when you're in those roles, one is in, in a hierarchical position where they are assuming and telling somebody else what's right and wrong and what to do. And, and we've all experienced that in different ways. What are some areas that you think are, are fairly typical of your clients or people that you've coached and worked with in the past? How have you seen that manifest itself? Hmm. Well, pe people, have, people have a hard time with boundaries. Wouldn't you say so, Don? Yeah, I I agree. Yeah, and when when you don't have when you don't have good boundaries drawn, that's that's part of the problem with good communication skills. Um, boundaries make you feel comfortable with who you are. Also, liking who you are helps you to have good communication skills. If you don't like who you are, then then the way you communicate, you might do do a lot of projecting. Uh, I I have uh, in, in, encountered quite a bit of uh, bad communication in my own life. I remember when I, I began to to learn good communication skills. God uh, brought a couple into our lives that had graduated from from. Um, Minister, ministerial school and, and had great communication uh, classes and stuff. And so they began to talk to us about how to communicate with each other. And, and as they were showing us, I realized those were things that I had not witnessed with my own parents or had seen. And anytime, anytime my parents had an argument, they always took it out of the room. Or, matter of fact, I never even knew my parents argued. Not until I became an adult, I thought that was really interesting. And the first time I saw that, they they had this big ex explosion in front of me, and I, I I have to say I was shocked. I was traumatized. <laughs> and these are the type of things that people experience when 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 they are going through the process of learning communication. Does that answer your question, Don? Well, it it does. I mean. Those emotional forms of communication really, really get in the way and create a lot of problems because really what comes out in those moments are fears, worries, insecurities, and, and it really is when you're, when you're communicating emotionally, you're not thinking about the other person or where the other person's at. You're thinking about where you're at and what you think you need and what you think you want at that moment in time. And so some kind of need for you isn't being met. And it's eliciting a response that comes back emotionally. So if you have, and I find this to be true, for people that tend to stay in parental roles, for a lack of a better expression, there's a big insecurity in there, and they're trying to overcome that insecurity or compensate for it by dominating, by controlling, by keeping everything moving forward in the way that they think it should go, even though they don't have any experience doing it themselves. They just want the satisfaction of feeling powerful in, in that given moment, where the other one at the bottom of the paradigm, that child, is now experiencing some type of reaction that's coming from that parental figure, and how do most kids respond when they hear something that they don't want to do, or they don't oh. want to hear <laughs> they 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 close off their ears. They usually get rebellious. They stubborn, stiff necked. Yeah. Yeah. There's that pushback, and uh -huh. so now you've got one yelling and one listening and one coming back. And then in any, any given conversation, you can flip the roles. You can be doing this, 
And where we need to get to in our communication is a level playing field where everybody is talking at a logical, reasonable level to one another such that we can solve problems. We, you know, it's okay to be emotional, but when you let the emotions escape in such a way that we can't solve the problem because the emotions <clears throat> and the ego keep getting in the way, that, that's a real problem. And I know that that's a big reason why, why we coach is because those people are in those roles and we have to help them get balance back. Mm -hmm. is, is, is that accurate for you that, and for what you do? Yeah, that is accurate for what I do, absolutely. And I, I wanted to ask you, Don, how, how would you, when you experience those emotions, I mean, the, our audience is going to want to know, well, yeah, I have that all the time, so how do I handle it? When all the emotions come up and all of a sudden all, all I see, I feel like a, a bull looking at a red flag. That's how, that's the emotions. I can't think. All I see is is my target, and that's how you begin to look at the person you're communicating with as a target. So, how do you handle that? Well, um, the answer is easy. The problem's complex. So, for everyone, it's probably going to look a little bit a little bit different. So, the way I would handle that, number one, is I need you to learn about you. I need you to learn. What are the things that, that you're struggling with? Where are the insecurities? Where are the fears? Where are the worries? Where are the things, what are the stories that you're telling yourself that are so far from reality? And you have to dig and explore those things because I, I kind of liken it to a train coming around, the, coming around the tracks. If you think of a train track coming like a U, in Pennsylvania there's an there's a, there's a area called Horseshoe Curve near Altoona, Pennsylvania. And literally the big train tracks are like a horseshoe, right? So most of us don't know what has happened to us until we get bludgeoned and pained and roll ourselves off the track and we look up and we see the train going around the corner. What we have to do is, is when we become more self-aware of what are the things that I'm struggling with, what are the trigger mechanisms, what are the things that the, those emotions start bubbling from, because until I can find out what those things are for me, I can't control them, because I don't really know that they're there. I have a, I, I'm just trying to control symptoms without solving the real problem. Mm -hmm. And until I can get to the root of what's causing those emotional outburst or disturbances, then, then it's like putting a band-aid on a, on, a, on a gaping wound that's never going to heal. Yeah, it does make it challenging, doesn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, that's where we have to start. You have to learn who you are. And then as you learn who you are, you've got to learn what those trigger mechanisms are. So it's all built into your programming. So if my spouse happens to look at me a certain way, and that look just gets under my nerves, and it just sets me right off. I should be able to look in the mirror or look down at myself and ask myself, why am I judging that? What is it about that particular look that really just irks me and starts a fight? And, and I'll bet you that if we boil it all down to it at the end of the day, 95% of all fights can be avoided. They're over petty, insignificant things that the emotions get in the way, and once the emotions barrel roll, then we start saying things that we don't mean and we don't regret because we're lashing out. And, and, and sometimes you, get, you can get to a point of no return. So you've got to figure out who you are and why you're responding that way. Then as you become more self-aware, it's a matter of discipline and training. So that now I feel the train on top of me, I've got to roll off the train while it's still on me. And then you can start to learn and feel the vibration in the tracks before the train comes around the corner so you can step off. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the word picture I like to use. And, 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 and all of us can do that. We can, you know, 2020 is hindsight. We can tell looking back when that trigger moment was, we have to become so self-aware that we can recognize it in the moment so that we can step off. I, I, uh, I often will talk to my, my clients about the emotions and I'll liken it to uh, a, a signal light. When emotions are really important and they're always telling you something and this is just kind of recapping what you just said 
but putting it in a picture form so those who think in pictures like I do can see this but when you have when you feel the hair on the back of your neck standing on end or you feel your nerves being wrangled uh, that's when the red light is going off and when that red light is going off that's when you need to stop and you need to do exactly what you just said you need to start self coaching yourself why what when where and how why do I feel this way what do I what is triggering it what happened and follow that those thoughts back to when it, it started so that you can figure out what was what was the the root cause of this type of behavior what is driving you yeah yeah and I and I find it always comes back to motive and maybe this will be a fun discussion we can have in the near future because I find that motive is centered around two questions what benefit do I have to gain what loss am I trying to avoid if you want to know who you are as a person ask yourself those two questions what benefit am I trying to gain what loss am I trying to avoid you filter every single decision through those two questions subconsciously and you don't even know it's there. Those are two amazing, powerful questions. It's always lurking right underneath the surface. You just aren't consciously aware that you're doing that. Well, and, and when you begin to identify that, one's, one's, a, one's optimistic, one's pessimistic, one's positive, one's negative, right? So why? Why do you bend one way over the other? What's in your experiences and your programming that's defining that? And those are the things that we're talking about in communication. So until you get through, who am I? It's a process. And you probably can't go through it alone. You probably need someone like Veronica or someone like myself that can take you through an experience over a period of time to teach you how to do that for yourself. Mm-hmm. Because we don't know how. If we knew how, we would be doing it all along. <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and here's the one other thing I'll say about it. The more you get to know you, the more you can start to get to know everybody around you. Oh, that is very true, Don. Excellent point. Yeah. So those are my tips for communication today. I think we could probably take a number of these and bridge off of them and have, um, have good 10, 15-minute discussions that go a little bit more in-depth in each area. What do you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that uh, communication is something that everyone is wanting to know and how to do better. And even myself, I, I, I always want to grow and learn and always be in a forward motion. So... If we can take people with us, let's do it. Um, I'm with you. So let's, you know, if you're watching this video today and you know that there's something wrong, you know there's an area that you need help in, then contact Veronica. Contact myself. I know I'm doing webinars regularly now. You can go, you can see right there my web address. You can go find out or on Facebook or whatever. You can go find out what, what's going on and get some of these other trainings. You can go to Veronica. I, I really encourage you guys strongly. Check Veronica out. She's got an incredible program. And, uh, and I know that, that between the two of us, there's a lot of people out there that you and I can help. Absolutely. Hey, that sounds really great. So fantastic. So thank you guys for tuning in, Veronica. Thanks for being with me on the first one. I'm, I'm really excited about where we're going to take this. And this is really going to evolve into a really special, unique discussion. There's just not a lot of people out there that talk about communication as a skill set uh, in the general population. So mm -hmm. uh, we hope to bring a lot of value to the table. So thank you, Veronica. Oh, thank you, Don. Have a really great day. Thanks. You too. We'll see you guys later. Absolutely. Bye-bye.